in this video we are going to discuss about the buck converters so buck converter means it is a step down converter here uh, if you see the circuit diagram you can see that there is a supply voltage which is vs and there is an output voltage v0 so these both are dc voltages so this buck converter is a dc to dc converter and it is a step down converter means step down converter means the average value of the output voltage will be lesser than the supply voltage so it is going to reduce the voltage okay so that is the functionality of a buck converter whatever supply voltage you are going to give it is going to give a as a result it is going to give an output average voltage lesser than the supply so then it is uh, then it is called a step down uh, converter okay so anyway it is a dc to dc converter and it is actually very efficient the efficiency is greater than 90 percentage and it is used in a lot of applications now in this uh, video we will be discussing about the circuit working and also the waveforms mainly okay so this is a quick revision video on buck converters so we are going to see the circuit diagram first there is a supply voltage there is a switch a diode which is a freewheeling diode is connected in parallel then there is an inductor and a capacitor is connected in parallel with the lot we are going to take the output voltage across the lot okay so these all things or these are elements are present in the circuit diagram okay next we know that this switch is nothing but a thyristor or an scr so we are going to turn on and turn off the switch and based on which the the buck converter will be working first we are going to see the case when the switch is on okay so the first case when the switch that is s is on so when the switch is on means you can consider this as a closed path okay so when there is a closed path created the current will start to flow from the supply that is from the source from the positive terminal of the source the current will start to flow in the outer loop okay so this is the path of current when the switch is closed okay clearly you can see the current is passing through the inductor and also the load okay here when the supply voltage that is there is a connection with the supply voltage and the output or the load so we are getting v out is equal to vs when the switch is turned on and also clearly you can see the current is passing through the inductor see here and the inductor is getting charged okay so the inductor is getting charged and the polarity of the inductor will be positive negative okay and the current will follow flow through the load and also it will take the outer loop path the current is not flowing through the diode so it will not be conducting for this case so when the switch is on the diode won't conduct so these all things you should be knowing why i have written as points because while drawing the waveforms you need all these points so if you study these topics as point wise rather than just go on reading the theory if you write down these points it will be easy for you to have a comparative study okay so that is the most efficient way of studying these converters because there is actually a lot of converters class a class b class c class c likewise there is a lot of converters and apart from that there is a uh, buck converter and boost converter so they all have a lot of similarities and differences so when you have a comparative study and by taking out taking down these points it will be easy for you to remember okay so anyway we have discussed the case when the switch is on you are going to get an output is equal to supply inductor is getting charged diode won't be conducting in this case next next we are going to see the case when the switch is off so now we have turned off the switch or the thyristor this uh, switches are actually thyristors so we are going to create an open path here and this won't be the path of current this is for the case when the switch is on now we are discussing the case when the switch is off so here what will happen is now there is actually no connection with the supply and the load so when the switch s is off one thing is very much clear that you are going to get v out is equal to zero volt 
Why? Because there is no connection with the supply and the load. There is an open path created. But due to the inductor, the inductor has charged to the full extent when the switch was on. And in the case when the switch is off, the inductor will start to discharge. Okay. The another point, the next point is inductor will start to discharge. So, for the previous case, it has charged. Now, it will start to discharge. Okay. The polarity of this inductor will be now reversed. Earlier, it was positive negative. Now, it will be negative positive. This will be the polarity of the inductor. And the current will be flowing in the, in this output loop. And the current will start to flow from the positive terminal of the inductor to the negative terminal. Like this. Okay. So, this will be the path of current when the switch is off because there is an open path here so the current will be flowing only in this loop okay and here clearly you can see the current will be flowing through the diode and the diode will be conducting diode will conduct the diode will be conducting and the current will be also flowing through the capacitor so the current also flows through capacitor. Okay. The current will be also flowing through the capacitor and the current will be flowing through the diode. The inductor will be discharging and its polarity will be reversed. And V out you are getting as 0 volt. Okay. So, we have seen two cases when the switch is on and also when the switch is off. So, if you take the average value of your output voltage, you will get a relation that V out is equal to duty cycle times the supply voltage. Now, this V out is nothing but the average value. Okay. The average output voltage is equal to duty cycle times the supply voltage. And the duty cycle value varies from 0 to 1. So, maximum it will be 1. It will be anyway less than 1. Okay. So, clearly you can see that when the value of D is in between 0 to 1 means V out average will be lesser than the supply voltage only. Okay. So, here you can see clearly the average output voltage is anyway lesser than the supply voltage. So, this is clearly a step down converter. Why? Because you are getting an output average lesser than the supply voltage. So, it is actually reducing your uh, supply voltage which you are going to give. Okay. So, it is going to step down the uh, output that is a, a voltage. So, it is going to produce an output average lesser than the supply. So, it is a step down converter. Okay. So, these all things are happening here and also next we are going to see the waveform. So, the waveform next let us see. Okay. So, we are going to see the waveforms. So, we will take two cases when the switch is on, then the switch is off. Again, switch is on, switch is off and switch is on, likewise it will be going. So, this is the switch. It is turned on, then turned off, turn on, turned off, turn on, likewise. Okay. Now, this is the T on case. Here also, here also it is T on. Okay. So, I am going to write it here, T on, T on. Here also T on. And for the other cases, it is T off. T off. Here also T off. Okay. Now, what will be the case of? First, we are going to draw the V out. V out waveform we are going to draw. Okay. So, when the switch is on, you are going to get V out is equal to the supply voltage or VDC. Right. So, it will be VDC here. And when the switch is off, you are going to get V out is equal to 0 volt. Okay. So, this thing is happening for V out case. Likewise, it will be going. Okay. So, here also the interval be, will be same. So, I have just drawn it a little bit different. But anyway, you will draw. You can draw it as same, same intervals. Okay. So, here you are going to get V S or supply here also Vs. 
here also you are going to be Vs. Okay. So, this is the case for your V out. That is output voltage you are getting only when the switch is turned on. When it is off, you are getting a 0 volt. Okay. So, we will use a different color for the V out. So, like this. V out. Okay. Next case. When uh, we are going to, next case we are going to see the current across the inductor. While discussing this, uh, the boost converter also, we have seen all these waveforms. Next we are going to see the IL or the current waveform. So, when the switch is on, the inductor is getting charged. When the switch is off, inductor is discharging, right. So, what is happening here is, so this is the zero line. The inductor will, first when the switch is on, it will charge to a maximum value. Then it discharge to a minimum value. The, minim uh, the minimum value need not to be zero, but anyway, it will discharge. So, charging, discharging, again charging likewise. And in these cycles, that is when the switch is on, it is charging. When the switch is off, it is discharging. So, current is going to a maximum value here, then it is dropping to a minimum value. Okay. So, this is the minimum, this is the maximum value. Likewise, it will go on for the switch on and off case. Next, we are going to see the diode current. So, clearly you can see when the switch is on, the diode is not conducting. When the switch is off, it will conduct. And the diode current will be same as that of the, the current across the inductor. Okay. So, we are going to draw the ID for the diode current. Okay. Diode uh, will be not conducting when switch is on. So, it will be 0. Then, when it is conducting, current value will be same as that of the inductor. Likewise, it will be going. Okay. So, this is the case for the diode current. When switch is on. So, this is the T on case. It is 0. Current is 0. Then, when it is off, the current value will be same as that of the inductor. Likewise, again 0, same as inductor. Likewise, it will be going. And also, here, the capacitor is also having, that is, capacitor is also charging and discharging uh, in this circuit. But the average value of current, if you take across a capacitor, it will be 0 only. So, uh, you don't need to actually study too much about the capacitor. And the function or the the duty of the capacitor here is to eliminate some AC ripples that are produced during the, uh, that is at the load side. So, you are keeping this capacitor across the load. So, this is a DC to DC converter, right? You are going to give a DC input, you are getting a DC output. But uh, due to the elements which are present in the circuit, there can be some uh, ripples which will get generated along with your output uh, DC. To eliminate that ripple element, we are actually keeping the capacitor. So, it is having a filter like function. Okay. And the average value of capacitor, uh, that is average value of current across the capacitor, if you take, it will be equal to 0 only. So, the function of the capacitor for this case and also for the boost converter case, we have seen that there is a capacitor kept along with the load, that is in parallel with the load. So, for uh, both the circuits, that is for boost converter and also buck converter, the capacitor is being kept to filter out the AC ripples. Okay. So, these things you should be knowing. So, in this video, we have discussed about the buck converter. We have seen the circuit, the working and also we have seen the waveforms. So, I am really hoping that you understood the topic which is buck converters. The boost and buck converters both are important especially in power electronics. So, we are actually doing a series of uh, power electronics sessions or lectures. I am really hoping that you are finding the videos useful. If yes, please do give it a uh, thumbs up. And also please do mention in the comment section if you want any improvements uh, in the lecture. Or if you want some additional topics, please do mention in the comment section. We will be doing that. Okay. So that's it. If you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.